tutorial design that is on my nails and if you participated in this month's live class you got a sneak peek of it because it was on my nails then but we have aerial and flounder and then a sea foam texture and some scales and I absolutely love the scales I have a texture behind the actual painted scale print which I think makes the whole thing extra extra cool it's my favorite scale that I've ever done and I've done scales quite a bit so that's saying something this is all done with Madame Glam gel products their gel polish and their gel paints I really love their gel paints, they came out this month, and then their new collection, which is a neon collection that was like a bonus collection this month. So I used almost all of those neons, I just didn't use the orange one, but all the other ones got put into this. My favorite one is the Lemoncello, that color is unlike any other color I have, which is saying a lot. Usually when I get new colors in the mail, it's like, oh, this is just like this one, but that particular color and the red one are both unique and gorgeous and I am just head over heels for them. The red is what I use for Ariel's hair and it is just such a nice bright summery red. It's not like a classic red or a, you know, like a fire truck red, it's different, it's more vibrant. So I absolutely love that one. So definitely check out those. I'll put the huge list of the Madame Pam colors I used in the description box below. It is a long list, probably the longest list I've ever had, but it is definitely worth a check on those products because they're all gorgeous, as well as my discount code and I will see you guys next time, bye. So I'm going to start with my middle of my ring finger painting one coat of white lace. And this one is not part of that new neon collection. This design is a lot of both colors that I've just had previously and then some of those new ones. So then the next one, next color I'm going to use is the color Ballerina. And I'm going to be using that for Ariel's face, neck, and torso. So if you guys watched my live class from this month, it was on characters. It was on um, doing character painting and just how to break down um, a bit character visually into basic shapes and everything. And as you can see, the techniques I'm doing now are slightly different than what I did to do my Mickey Mouse in that video. Just as far as how I'm transferring the image from my reference photo to the nail. It's a different concept. It's a different uh, just style of doing it for me. The reason that that class and the reason that those techniques that I use in that class are so crucial for doing what I do when I'm doing a nail like this is that it teaches it teaches my eye how to look at how to look at the image to see what I'm supposed to see because it's the same thing like when you're just when you just look at something quick you don't necessarily see the little details you don't see you know what angle things are at you just you see the overall picture and you really need to train your eye to see not the overall picture in fact basically ignoring the overall picture and just looking at the very detail that you're doing at this moment and if making a little sketch with a pencil I got this question a lot is if you could do a sketch with a pencil on the nail before you know before going in with your gel paint and a lot of people do that and it isn't a problem and you certainly can do that and do it a lot more similar to how I did it in my life class so now after I have her base done I'm going to use the color XOXO and I'm going to be doing some shading this color is one of my absolute favorites I recommend it to people all the time and for some reason on the website it looks very opaque and it really isn't it's this gorgeous jelly consistency and it does things like shading on skin tones so beautifully and even though it looks really kind of harsh and abrupt right here it'll blend in nicely I kind of blended in a little bit before I cured it but even if you don't even if you just leave it once you apply the top coat later it just kind of melts together and it looks absolutely gorgeous so despite how it looks on their website because I think on the website it just looks I don't know not that great and I don't know why but it just it really doesn't it is just one of the most beautiful colors to actually use so I'm going to take and I'm going to do some shading on her neck and her shoulder between her breasts on the front of her on the front of her body, on her side of her body, and under her arm, and then just a little bit on the bottom of her nose. So after I have that done, and this is one of the new colors, it's Energize Your Day, I'm going to be doing her hair. And like I said, it is a very unique red. It's like a bright scarlet red. And it's just so, you know, a lot of times reds aren't very pigmented, and that's a complaint I have about red just in general. This one isn't like that, as you can see, as I'm applying it and painting with it. It is a great consistency it's nice and thin so it's easy to paint with while maintaining that level of pigment that you really want and it's a little bit you know kind of hard to tell that just because I'm painting over a milky white background so it's not like it's covering up a different color to see exactly how pigmented it is but it really does paint very very well so I was very happy with that and sometimes neon colors just are a little bit less cooperative in that respect and this one applies very nicely so I'm going to do her hair going around her 
And this is a circumstance where if you did sketch it in on the background first before painting over it, it may take two coats instead of one to cover all of those little graphite marks. And that was the main reason that I mentioned in my live class not to do a pencil sketch first is just because it may take a little bit more work later to cover up your pencil marks. And I know I've had it before where the uh, the solvents and the gel polish almost lift up the graphite and mix it together and it creates a swirly gray look. And that's something that it just takes a second coat of that color, whatever color you're using to cover that up. But it is just one more step that may or may not happen. So really just try it out for yourself. It's, you know, it's personal preference for sure. So we've got her hair filled in on the other side of her neck, just a little bit down the side of her body on that one corner of the nail. After that's cured, I'm going to use the color Deep Burgundy to add some more just shading and highlights in her hair. So when I say we're adding highlights with a Deep Burgundy, I mean we're not we're avoiding the highlights we're leaving that energize your day as the highlights and when we're doing this this whole design i'm keeping it kind of moderately simple she's a cartoon still but i did want to add a little bit of that shading to it so with just about every step i have a bright color and a darker color so i've got the two colors on her skin tone it was ballerina and xoxo for my shading on her hair it's this energize your day and deep burgundy and we're going to do the same thing for her seashells too once we get to that point so I'm just going to do each each section going through with starting either with the lighter color or the darker color and then adding that secondary color to really show off all of the shapes and make her just look a little bit more dimensional. Even though she's flat and she's painted, she should look like she is alive and ready to swim off your nail. So we've got that little bit of shading. Don't forget to shade kind of back, uh, back behind her neck to make it look like her hair isn't just all in front of her but tucked behind her shoulders. Kind of blend that out and this brush that i'm using is the detail liner from madame glam from their new brushes those have been my go-to ever since i tried them out i really do enjoy those brushes i think that the smallest one here that i'm using is really nice and small and you don't usually get to see brushes that are that small even the ones that are made for nail art so now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to paint her seashell top with the color office gossip and this is one that came out a couple years ago but it's a really nice just classic purple color and we're going to instead of doing the lighter color and going darker this time we're going to start with the dark color and then add the lighter highlights later so her body's turned at like a two-thirds angle so when you're painting her seashells keep that in mind when you're going through and doing that and I do just want to mention that if anybody is an Ariel or a Little Mermaid fan in general, I have a bunch of previous Ariel and Little Mermaid themed designs, including um, an Ursula one that would be a very complimentary set to this one that I did a few years ago. So if you're interested in that one, or maybe just it was about one year ago, I will put a link to all of those past Little Mermaid themed videos in the description box below. And you can check them out because they're all, you know, you can really see my progress I should say too because when you look at somebody's work and you see how they are today you know it can it can feel very discouraging and so if you look at you know how those you know how I did a year ago or two years ago painting an aerial you will really see how how you you can really progress quickly with some dedication and some perseverance so now with the brown gel paint I'm going to be doing some outlines on her so I'm going to outline basically everything that I want to really emphasize and show off and if you look at your reference photo of Ariel you'll see where all the outlines are and you can find them and place them I like to start on the body because I think they're a little easier than going in for her facial outlines so then after I have those done then I'm going to do her face as you can see I went back and forth from one eye to the other to try to keep them balanced side to side so that they look like they're in the right place and I'm going to do her eyebrows and then her lips as well and even though her eyebrows and her lips aren't this brown gel paint color doing it in brown first just really gives you a nice base so that then when you go through and finish off the details you have a softer line to work with instead of something so harsh so I'm going to fill in her eyes with the white gel paint from Madame Glam as well as her teeth I'm gonna do the first eye and the second eye and then add just that little bit of white in her mouth for her teeth too after that's done and you have that cured then we're going to go through and we're going to use vitamin C for her um, her irises in her eyes energize your day the same color as her hair on her lips and then we're going to use that deep burgundy on her eyebrows and her lips on this one got to be a little bit where that color wanted to spread out some and it seemed like the more I tried to fix it the more they wanted to spread so eventually I just was like ah it's going to be fine I'll fix it later so we're going to leave that like it is and there's that vitamin C which is such a nice bright bright blue and I'm going to use that on some of the other nails as well so you get a little bit better view of it so there's the one iris 
there's the second iris. If any of these little bits of color go outside the lines, your white or your blue, just remember that you can always go back through with the color that it should be and fix it up. So like if you get some blue on her cheek accidentally, if your hand slips or something, you can always either wipe it off before you cure or you can take your original skin color, that ballerina, and fix it up. And it's not a problem. Just like how I just fixed her teeth after I had my little incident with the red. I'm going to add a touch of Amazonian Dream in her eyes, which is a bright green. And then going back through with the black gel paint, I'm going to be just finalizing a few of the details. I'm going to be giving her her upper lash line as well as her eyelashes. On both sides, I'm going to do that. Like I said, I like to do you know, the same thing on both sides, especially when I'm working with eyes, just to make sure that I keep them symmetrical instead of finishing off one eye and then going back through and doing the other. So after I have all the eyelashes done, then I'm gonna go through and do her pupils. And once those are done, you can cure this again and then add one final little dot of white in each eye. And then our Ariel's done and we can move on to the ring finger, which is going to be flounder. So I'm going to start with the color Bright Honey and I'm going to paint just the base shape of flounder. And when I was doing this, I tried to line it up so it would look like they were kind of looking into each other's eyes when the hand was being held still. So when you're doing this, just kind of keep that in mind when you're figuring out his placement. So just take and really carefully draw him in. You can take your time with this. Don't feel rushed. There's, you know, endless time. That's one benefit for sure of wearing press-ons over doing this on yourself is I feel like it's a little bit less uh, time sensitive, I suppose, when you're doing it on a press-on. I actually did both hands of these press-ons and about the time it would take me to do one hand if I was just painting on myself because I could still be painting while whatever I was just working on was curing, I could be doing a different nail. And so I really got these out pretty quickly. I was rather impressed if I do say so myself. So then we have our little flounder done and then I'm going to use the color halo and I'm going to be adding another layer to him. Halo is slightly darker than that first bright honey color it doesn't show up that much on video as far as the shading goes, but it definitely gives them just a little bit more dimension to have some of that darker yellow color on the lower part of, of flounder. And then we're going to use that vitamin C once again to paint some of his fins. So I'm going to start out with his dorsal fin. And then after we have that dorsal fin done, you can't see his tail fin in this particular view that I have of him, but you can see his pectoral fin. So we're gonna be doing those too. So there's the first little bit of that dorsal fin kind of going up and around and then add the second one. He's got a couple little, little bits of fin that are sticking up away from the rest and then finish off the end of that and just kind of bring it down around and tuck it in on the side adding little bits of that gel polish at a time. When you're painting with gel polish, you don't wanna to have too much on your brush because it'll end up creating like a blob effect. You wanna just add little bits at a time so that you don't overdo it. Then I'm going to flash cure that. Like I said, it's gel polish, it's not gel paint, so it does have the potential to spread. These colors don't spread very much, but you never know, so it's better to just be safe than sorry. So there's the one pectoral fin that's kind of off behind him from the other side, and there's a little bit of the pectoral fin that would be on this side of him, this view. Once I have those done, then I'm going to be adding his stripes down the side of his body, adding those with that same vitamin C. Make sure that this whole time you're referencing your reference photos. This is another thing that I did mention in that class, and I know I'm reiterating a lot of information from that class, but if you do wanna watch it, which I would, if you're interested in painting characters and you have any questions about my personal techniques, I would highly recommend that you check out that class because there was a lot of information packed into it, and um, I had some requests to make it into a series where we paint or we sketch different characters, and that honestly sounds like a ton of fun. So I think we might just do that. So if you are interested in having that continue and be a more extended class, definitely let me know. Also let me know what characters you would be interested in having a little sketch party with. So after we have that, we're going to take the darker blue color from that new neon collection and we're going to be adding the little outlines of Flounder's fins. So we're gonna be doing just a little bit here and there. I'm not as worried about fully outlining all of the fins. If there's like a little break in the outline here or there, that is fine. I just wanna really make sure it is vivid and intense so that there's no question about where each fin stops and starts. And it's it's mostly that dorsal fin that's as important so that there's a definition or a, you know, a definite line between that dorsal fin and the stripes. And then going back to that brown gel paint, the same color that we used to outline Ariel, we're going to be outlining all of Flounder's facial features. So I'm going to start on the outside and then kind of work my way towards the middle, 
and just kind of connect all those lines going around, starting in my favorite spot and then kind of working around, kind of working out from there. I always like to do the outsides first when I'm doing the outlines and then kind of progressively work my way towards the middle. And then I'm going to do the next kind of biggest, most middle part, which is going to be his nose. And then add the second little line on his nose. After that's done, then you can kind of add his little smile line on the side, his mouth that builds off of that and fits right in with that little mouth line that we had that jutted out on the side already. Add the rest of that little line for his cheek. Add the little outline for the yellow portion of his pectoral fin. And then we're going to be doing his eye outlines. So take this really slowly. Like I said, even before with everything else, just don't rush, just take your time. When you're doing this with the brown gel paint, these outlines are probably the most uh, difficult, I guess you could say, both for Ariel and for Flounder. Getting these little facial feature outlines can be the most crucial step. And so if you make a mistake, just wipe it off. Take a, a little bit of acetone, not acetone, rubbing alcohol or nail cleanser and just on a lint-free wipe, just wipe it off and then start over. And it's not a big deal. And then it's all done and you are, you know, good to try it again. It's not you know, it's not finalized. It's not set in stone until you cure it. So if you are worried about that, it's, it's okay. You can always go back and try it again. So we're going to fill in his eyes with the white gel paint and then his mouth with the deep burgundy color, the same color that I used for Ariel's hair. So there's the white gel paint. And here you also can see that I did overline his nose a little bit and you will get to see how I fix that later. I, you know, I didn't, fix that better with my brush before like wipe it off and start over because there's always a, another option I had so many outlines done I didn't want to have to start over all the way so if there is always just a little you know mishap you can always take one of your original yellows like I am and just fix it and it's really not a big deal at all so now we're going to use the color Amazonian Dream and we're going to do his his irises with that it's such a bright beautiful bright beautiful green reminds me of key lime pie and then the color energize your day for his tongue and all of these colors uh, from that new uh, Madame Glam collection are very bright and it's actually kind of a funny collection because I don't necessarily think they all go together like in a set I wouldn't necessarily put them together or choose to put them all together especially the red I think is kind of a little bit I don't know it doesn't complement the other ones necessarily but in this particular set as Ariel as soon as I saw them like that color looks like Ariel's hair and I thought you know I'm just gonna do that. So then I also used uh, the color Blair Waldorf as uh, flounders just to kind of outline his eyes and Limoncello's little highlight in his irises. And then I'm going to use the black gel paint to give him his upper lash line. Don't give him any eyelashes, just do that lash line and then do his eyebrows as well. So you're essentially painting over your, your brown gel paint with black and give him one little line in his mouth and then also do his pupils. And then after you have his pupils done, all that's really left to do on Mr. Flounder, once that's cured, is to give him a little white highlight in his eyes. One quick dab of white gel paint, and that is done. So now on the thumb, we're going to do the color Amazonian Dream in the upper half of the nail, and then that Blair Waldorf on the tip. So that Amazonian Dream is that one that I said reminds me of Key Lime Pie. And then the Blair Waldorf on the tip, and these colors are going to get blended with a little piece of makeup sponge. Madame Glam does have an ombre brush that I honestly haven't used because I've never really enjoyed ombre brushes. I've tried them from various companies and I just always think I can get a better blend with a sponge. Sometimes you do have a little bit of a bubble that sticks through, but Madame Glam's colors have such a beautiful pigment and consistency that they work really well to do with the sponge. So I figure if it's my, you know, it's my comfort zone, I'm gonna do it the way that I like to do it anyways. So I'm going to do that for a second coat. And then once that's done, I'm going to press some chameleon flakes into the surface that is slightly tacky. So it kind of maintains that flaky texture. And I'm going to just press those all the way around, still using a clean piece of makeup sponge. I really love those little pieces of makeup sponge. They're one of my favorite little tools in my kit. I have a huge bucket of them next to my nail station, so I can always grab it, rip off a section. But then I'm going to take the white gel paint and I'm going to be painting scales. I started at the cuticle and then I'm going to work my way down painting each one. I did very big sized scales instead of little teeny tiny ones. And the reason I did that is so that more of that flaky texture would show through. So you could really see how gorgeous it is. And I mean, this 
these nails are absolutely stunning. They pick up the light like an opal and they really have that fishy type look to them. So we're going to continue that little scale pattern all the way down and then on the pinky end, the index nail, we're going to be doing vitamin C in the upper half of the nail and take me to my Konos in the lower half of the nail and then blending the two together with another piece of that makeup sponge. Both of those blues are super bright. They're different blues. I mean, they're not like the same kind of a blue, but they're very complementary to each other. So we're going to blend those together and then repeat for a second coat. Both of them are super pigmented as well, I might add. There's that second coat on the tip and then blend them together once again. And after that's done, then I'm going to apply a very thin coat of the color white lace, which is what I use as the background behind Ariel and Flounder. And that is just a thin coat over the entire nail. It doesn't even have to be very smooth. It just has to be a nice, even layer. And then once that's on, I'm going to take a dotting tool and place little dots of no wipe top coat into that white lace and just let that kind of work its magic. As you can see, after you let those little dots set for just a moment, they really start to spread out and give you this amazing bubble texture. So you really want that first coat of the white lace to be super thin so that by the time you add all of these little drops of top coat, it doesn't get too thick and start like pouring off the nail or something. After that's cured, then we're going to apply a layer of no wipe gel top coat over the thumb, the index, and the pinky nail. So that's over basically the three nails that aren't a character. So we got that other layer. I absolutely love that little bubble technique. It's one of my favorites and it looks so good and it's so appropriate with this set. And then after those are done, then I'm going to take matte, it's Madame Glam's Velvet Matte velvet matte top coat and I'm apply that over Ariel and Flounder. I think Madame Glenn's matte top coat is really nice for characters because it doesn't make them look foggy at all. It's very clear. Some matte top coats have a like a foggy filmy look to them and this one really doesn't. Everything looks really nice and beautiful and clear so I am in love with it. I hope you guys love this design as much as I do and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well.